So we're back with another cool adventure on our way to Tinley. We stopped by our buddy Forrest Fannings, who does Zoo Dreams and Rep Tech and Whole Blooded Cafe. One of the best uh, rodent breeders in the US, in my opinion. So we're here at his facility, checking things out. We're gonna take you along. So we're here with Forrest Fanning. As you guys saw, his rodent production room that he was, uh, we were checking out. Um, so we're gonna ask something that a lot of people ask us about and that I think a lot of people are, are looking to find more information about, especially from somebody that's, you know, like one of the top guys in the country at producing rodents, is what are the five tips you can give to anybody that want to breed their own rats or their own rodents of any kind? Okay. Um, yeah, it's not something I, I really have ever talked about um, online, so. But you guys are cool, so I, I appreciate it. Yeah, and well, the main re reason I'm doing it is uh, is because the tips I'm going to give are how to prevent a bunch of animals from suffering horrible deaths at once. Yeah, it's so definitely that's, something that yeah. always happens to people, like when they first get into it. Yeah, so Make mistakes and um, you know, the, you've got to put a lot of thought into your your building space, and uh, you know, hopefully you're not renting a space to do it. If you are, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully, it's got chew proof, a chew proof situation on the walls. Um, hopefully, it's got some kind of ventilation and you're not using their HVAC. Um, you know, just renting a space for roads is a really bad idea. Yeah. Um, typically, people are doing, you know, a backyard um, shed that's insulated, and you can do that, and that works out really well uh, in, if it's like, you know, at max 10 by 20. And when you do it that way, you can you can do air conditioners, and you can just change them out because the ammonia from uh, from rats, especially, but mice too, uh, will rip through the coils. Um, you know, it's corrosive, so yeah, it'll rip sense. through the coils of the AC in, in just a few months. So you're gonna have to switch switch it out. But it's it's worth it um, if you're in a part of the country where where uh, cooler. well, no, where it stays so hot. You know, you just uh, a wind tunnel effect. You know, wind tunnels when you have full air circulation where your cubic feet of uh, movement in your in your room, the CFM, you know, you basically length times height times width, that's your, uh, how many cubic feet are in your room. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at an exhaust fan, it tells you the cubic feet per minute. And you want, if you're doing a wind tunnel system, you want almost full air movement. So you want that CFM to basically show that there's, there's constant movement and uh, Okay. In there, That's and cool. uh, yeah, so those are the two things that people do. They're either trying to air condition, which uh, that would be a multiple hour con conversation if we were talking about mm -hmm. that on a commercial yeah. level. Um, there's been so many people that have tried to do it, and it's you know so many people have have, have lost tons of money trying to do it because it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. the, la the laboratories that do it, you know, are using uh, train companies like that, super chillers that. Mm -hmm just pump out a ton of cold air. They're 100% outside air. So that's the problem with like a, a commercial HVAC unit is it has to have an intake in the room to suck out the humidity and, you know, bring that down the sense. temps. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, not only the, the, the corrosive ammonia, but the dust that's going through that intake, mm -hmm. is, it's gonna ruin it almost immediately. So um, so, so that's, that's really the big issue is how are you gonna cool the space? How are you gonna get the airflow through there? Um, so that would be my first tip is uh, is to think that out. Contacts, uh, you know, you could, your your local HVAC guy has not dealt with this, you know. Yeah, yeah. They, and if they have, they've dealt with it with a laboratory that has a budget bigger than any company in reptiles. So, yeah, sure. Um, so you've got to be creative and you've got to engineer um, something that's going to work for you. The the uh, you know so I, I know we're trying to stick to numbers. So okay, so that's one. You know, Pre-plan yeah. your uh, your your ventilation and, mm -hmm. and HVAC. Uh, number two is going to be uh, having both, uh, and this needs to be not just 
Wi-Fi base, but there needs to be cellular backup, so it should be on. An, it should be from a commercial alarm monitoring center. Um, you need to have a temperature alarm in there that's going to tell you when uh, you lose power, and then you need to have a generator, and you need to either have somebody that's within, depending on where you live, if it's in uh, Texas or Arizona, somebody that's within a minute. Um, there, there, no matter what, you have to have an auto backup. Like it has yeah. to turn on the generator sure. itself. If you're up north or somewhere with a more, you know, moderate climate, um, then you're okay just with that that monitoring center, so you can get over there and manually turn on the generator. Mm. Um, but that's the second thing is you have to have power backup because I've had it in my rat room and my stuff's not overcrowded. You know, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's to the standards that laboratories would say, this is how many animals can be in this room. But I've had it be zero degrees here and my exhaust fans turn off. And within, you know, under an hour, it's almost 100 degrees in there with wow. water dripping from the ceiling. So, and that's when it's zero degrees out. If it's 70 degrees out or 90 degrees out, oh, yeah. a couple minutes and everything's dead. I mean, right. every single thing's dead. And that's, that happens a few times a year. Um, and that has an effect on the road market. So it's like, oh, this guy just lost his colony and the prices went up. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable. That's it's unbelievable. So it's like, you know, there's technology now that's super affordable that you can oh, yeah. prevent that and not have lots of animals die and uh, sure. not hurt your uh, your colony, whether it's for yourself or for commercial purposes. Um, number three tips, uh, you know, my, my number one mentor in the road business was Mark Bailey. And, uh, oh really? Yeah, and, and, and just in, in general, you know, I mean, he's somebody that I really looked up to. He's he's a, you know, just his his ethics, his uh, his, you know, just keep things reasonable and don't do a lot. Do something yeah. you can handle and do it right. And I'm just figuring. I'm I'm still trying to to be that way, and mm -hmm. it's a constant fight because you want to do a lot of stuff. Um, but I, I've learned, you know, the hard way that, and, and many people have in the reptile business. I've talked to many guys that, you know, have been top five people in the business at one time or another, and they, you learn, you literally double the size of your company, you know, millions of dollars, and don't make another cent. So yeah. you have all that overhead, all those more employees, or all those more rodents, and you did all that, and you could service more customers, but all you made is more stress and, uh, and, and all that so more isn't always better that's sure. that's number three a hundred percent is like you know when you have tens of thousands of rodents being produced a week and then all of a sudden you have a few employees quit all on you all at once oh I've had God. it happen many times it's yeah. uh it's it's an emergency you know it's, it's like <laughs> you're literally working like you know you know sure yeah you, you're working yourself into the ground and make sure just basic things are done and you're you're not able to ship out orders, or you're not able to to do all that. So so we're on three, right? Okay, number four, um, having a backup water source, and you know understanding how long, like you know, if you're out in the country and you're on a well system, um, then you need to time out, assuming it's the worst time of the year for well people. I've uh, I've had four wells go out on me. And I think three of them are on holidays. Dead serious. Like on, on Thanksgiving Eve, um, I think I had one on Christmas. I think it was like one Thanksgiving, like two on Christmas. Luckily, well guys are typically set up to, uh, to their, it's, you know, people need water. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, my, my rodents drink like 500 gallons of water a day or something. So it's, wow. so, you know, yeah. I had to keep upgrading the size, but uh, but definitely have a backup water sure. source. The easiest thing for you to do is have a five gallon bucket full per like freedom breeder rack or ARS rack. Mm -hmm. um, and typically that will hold for about a week, which that's good, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, do either that or have like a backup well, but have backup water because it, they, you have a very short window, a very yeah, short sure. window. and. Uh, and like with mice, they, they don't recover. Like mm -hmm. you, you might get them the water before they they um, they, they go too far, yeah. But they they don't seem to recover from that. So yeah. um, and yeah. then the, like when things flood or something like that, you're not prepared. Yep. Because that adds to you know the just the consumption. Of, yep. 
go quick. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's th those things are, are super important, and uh, and it's just easy to talk it and not walk it. And, yeah, uh, like it's uh, sure. it's definitely. Um, last thing, let's see here. Last thing would be um, having an escape-proof room and then using poison, and uh, which you know a lot of times you don't want to do because you don't want your dogs. Get, you sure. know, if it's a home property or a farm property like ours, yeah. you don't want to you don't want to harm the environment by having these uh, these poisoned animals out there. But you know, they can be really destructive mm -hmm. to the environment, to your neighbors, to everything else. So um, you know, like this room right here, uh, we've just got some uh, com commercial siding. You can get it at Home Depot, and um, that works really well. You know, that's that's it. That's a cheap, easy solution. Sure. Um, you know, you can also like out of farm tech go with, with different types of like rolled plastic and stuff over the walls, but um, make make it truly escape proof. Like, you know, yeah. don't like it, in our rodent room we have a um, what do they call it? Double containment. So mm -hmm. you walk into a room before you walk into a room. Yep. Um, and we, we did that so that we could keep because you know that's one side of it. You don't want your stuff getting out, um, and you want to try to you know make sure if you build your own racks that they're secure enough. Like. No matter what, you're always going to drop some rodents. Yeah, like, yeah, like sure. it's just part of the game. Like you're never going to not um, drop them. Sure. Um, and when you do, do not put those rodents back yeah, into your. We learned that too. If they, yeah. if if they eat, if they chew out of a bin, we're like you have to feed everything off because they yeah. teach them. They teach yeah. each other somehow. It's yeah, like, I know we've already went through them, but like not. Um, you know, keeping chewers is a horrible, horrible decision. Yeah. I don't care how small your colony is or how bad you need them. It's, I, I've had, uh, I've, it, like, it only happened to me once, but like I had a psychopathic strain of, of chewers <laughs> emerge from yeah, the colony yeah. and they learned to chew water lines at a rate I've never seen. Like I'd fix one, I'd go inside, I'd come back out and the entire rack, and I mean like rip the entire lines out. So when they, when they learn, it's like a compulsive behavior or something. Yeah. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but um, yeah. So um, we're talking about you know security. Don't let them get out, and don't let anything from the outside get in because that's how um, we've had you know public health issues that you know made national news. Where you know because the rodents that are that are outside they can carry all kinds of diseases and stuff that you yeah, don't want to get into your colony and fleas and things like that. So. Uh, just just take that stuff really seriously and and you're good and, you know from yeah. the, from the business side of it you know that's where you know I wish everything that I've done I wish I would have listened to Mark more and just mm -hmm. not grown slower and just you know done things more because um, when you have too yeah when you have too many irons in the fire you know it's like yeah. I'm, I'm miserable all the time because I have too many things going on and I can't manage you know building some new indoor crocodile ponds while I'm you know, building a new mouse room, and yeah. while I'm, you know, my retail site's expanding and all that, like, it's, it's just too much, man, and, um, so I would just, like, keep it small, but do it really well, and Mark's done very well for himself his whole life, and he's had a, not a very big rodent colony, not mm -hmm. a lot of snakes, but, yeah. you know, but he has high quality everything, yeah, I mean, it's, Does. yeah, I, I, I really, Many times. Me too. Yeah, I mean, like when I was into ball pythons, and everything, and uh, and rodents. He was my my number one mentor. So yeah, I think yeah. that you know, if you, that's that's the problem with all of us. So when we get into this, you know, I, I meet young people, and they're like, you know, what should I get? And I'm like, I don't get anything. Just just go uh, volunteer at you know this yeah. local breeders place, or go hang out at the zoo and read some books, and just give it time, and then slowly figure out a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna be unstoppable. Like mm -hmm. that's that's the reality. Is if you if you think it out and and you know try to have a specialty, try to do something that you know there's a need for. There's always a need for something. Sure. And uh, if you can figure out what that is, and a lot of people right now are thinking there's there's a big need for rodents, and there is. You know, there's there's mm -hmm. always a need for it. It's a low profit margin business that takes oh, a yeah, high sure. high, high amount volume. of investment. Yeah. Yeah, high amount of investment for a very low margin. Yeah. Compared to other things, so For sure. um, and it doesn't it doesn't scale well. There's been every single year. There's been a guy I've met, the the, the new money guy or whale, mm -hmm. and he's gonna he's gonna take it over. You know, yep. yeah. He's same thing with ball pythons. Yeah, sure. And this business doesn't scale. It doesn't scale yeah. well.
That was a really cool video with Forrest. Uh, unfortunately, we had a little camera trouble. First time it ever happened, the only time it ever happened, the camera overheated at the very end of his conversation. So we kind of cut it a little bit short, but we got the majority of it down. And look, we're breeding rats. Just one though, by itself. It's not long, Gus Gus. <laughs> just kidding. We, uh, we do breed rats a little bit, just for ourselves. And um, some of them are pets. Some of them are pets, and some of them are, um, you know, friends. <laughs> Is that cool to say that, you know, things have to eat? Things do have to eat, but not Gus Gus. No, Gus Gus has to eat, but he doesn't get fed off to things. Thank you guys for viewing, and uh, make sure you like and subscribe to this. Ask us any questions, we'll try to answer it the best we can. Forrest uh, never talks about uh, how to breed rats or tips with it, because, you know, that's what he does for a living, it's his main income. Um, but he was super nice. And he wants to make sure that people do it right so that they, you know, don't mess up their colonies and don't kill a whole bunch of animals or hurt their, their pets that they're feeding or hurt the environment. Too, or hurt the environment. Yeah, he definitely talked about that. So, so like and subscribe to uh, our channel. No, not like and subscribe. Like this video and subscribe. So, like this video and subscribe. So, like, subscribe. So, like, subscribe. So, subscribe to the video. No, no, no. So, like <laughs> so like this video and subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell um, that'll let you guys know when we are doing new videos I keep on moving my hands I don't know why let's do it so when did you know that you really had a thing for Ryan because that's really what we're getting into here um, I don't know, just like, the beard, I've always been uh, into BBM. He is a man. And, okay. uh, yeah, he's just, you know, Perfect. He's good color. That's actually the biggest, uh, when people do comments at the bottom of videos, that's what they always say. That he's a big, beautiful man? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get a lot of that, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Um, better shape than, like, I'm skinny fat, which is, you know, one of the worst. Um, oh, yeah. Body types were. People knew that you were skinny at one point. I'm not even calling you fat, right? We're like, fat dude, we're like fat, fat. <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty fat. It's fine. <laughs> it's your turn to talk. You're like, I'll get you next time, gadget. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Ryan is actually really good at voices. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bootstraps, bootstraps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm telling the story. We've had not but Maggie bread for three stinking days. Pretty yeah, good. <laughs> you wicked eat some meat. It's pretty good. <laughs> and he can rap. So you guys think like, I he's just sitting rap. there, he's just keeping quiet, you know, but really, <laughs> he's actually the, the the character of this. I'm just, I just talk a lot. And I, I have a am the character. <laughs> it's well, pretty good. Yeah, bye. See ya. Bye.